Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the broadcast, the Friday edition here at Bible Tract Echoes. It's been a great week, and it's even going to be a better weekend for me. I get to speak in my home church. My pastor is recovering from surgery, and I get to fill in for him this coming Sunday. That's always a pleasure. The folk there, they know me quite pretty well. I can't buffalo them. They expect me to open the Word of God and declare what it says very clearly, and that's, I guess, what we're supposed to expect from every person teaching the Word of God, whether from a pulpit or in a Sunday school classroom or whatever the case may be. Well, right now, my Bible sits open to the book of 1 John and chapter 1. We're in the last verse of that chapter. We've been here for the last couple of weeks. Today ends our little short study here. I've got a gospel tract in my hand, a kiddo tract. I want to encourage you to get tracts from us today. But right now, reach over, get your Bible, and join me in 1 John 1. Get something on which you can jot some notes. Not only will you be able to take notes with that pen and paper handy, but you can jot down our contact information so I can send you a free sample packet of gospel tracts. Let me lead into our broadcast study this way. Not long ago, I was in a discussion with somebody that I really didn't know all that well, but the subject was about marriage, and in particular, it was about same-sex marriage. Well, the good news is, is that the conversation stayed very cordial. The bad news is, is that the other person and I did not agree at all. In the discussion, I made a reference to the scripture, and I said something like this. Well, the truth found in the Word of God says, and then I went on to make a statement, The other person came back with these words, and I'm quoting now, but your truth is not my truth, end quote. Now, at that moment, our discussion came to a real key moment, a critical moment. My response to this man was this, sir, if something is true, then it's not my truth or your truth. It's simply truth, and both of us will have to deal with it, end quote. I don't like it when an unsaved person comes up with their own idea of what truth is and and in so doing rejects God's truth. I don't like that, do you? You know what I dislike even more than that? It's when a believer comes up with their own truth and rejects God's truth. And that's where we find ourselves in the last verse of 1 John chapter 1. Get your Bible, get something on which you can take notes. Friend, I have a gospel tract in my hand. The word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T. A gospel tract is an evangelism tool. It's a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. We have 40 some tracks here. I want to give you a sample of one each of them. That is the ones that are in English. I want to give you each one of them. But the, each one of the tracks tells the same gospel message. It just comes at it from a different angle. This track is entitled, Are You Afraid? Are You Afraid? A lot of people use this track around Halloween time to give to kids that come trick-or-treating, but this track is, does not use the word Halloween in it. It's just dealing with the fact that kids these days have a lot of fears to deal with, and we answer those fears from the Word of God using the verse out of Isaiah 40, verse 10, which says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. And we answer in kid-level language how not to have to be afraid if we have Jesus Christ as our Savior. Oh, friend, here's a great tool for kiddos. 
If you got kiddos, if you know some kiddos, if you have kiddos in your neighborhood, get the sample pack out of tracks, please. At the end of the program, as I said, my announcer will make our contact information available to you. Jot down the method that works best for you. You can go to our website. Our web address is Bible, B-I-B-L-E, and then the word tracks, T-R-A-C-T-S, and then the letters I-N-C, Bible Tracks Inc. dot O-R-G. You can order the sample packet there. With your Bible open, here's what the last verse of 1 John 1 says. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him, that is God, a liar, and his word is not in us. Now, my beloved friend, verses 5 through 10 of 1 John 1 is a key, a key needed Bible passage for believers, and here's why. These verses give us two things. Number one, they give us the foundation of our relationship with God. Our fellowship with God as a believer is not based on God's love and grace. It's based upon holiness. Verse 5 says God is light. That means he's perfectly holy. We, to be in fellowship with him, to be near him, we must be holy, and we cannot be holy unless God makes us holy through the shed blood of Christ. The second thing that these verses give us are three false statements. Three times you're going to find the words, if we say. We find them in verse 6, 8, and 10. Now, every time we find those words, they introduce a lie which some folk have been telling themselves and others. Here in verse 10, we find lie number three. If you missed our studies in the first two lies, you can go to our website, BibleTracksInc.org, and listen to those lessons. Today, though, we need to complete our study here in 1 John chapter 1, and we finish it by looking at the final false statement. Verse 10 reads again this way, If we say that we have not sinned, we make him, God, a liar, and his word is not in us. Now, this false statement flows naturally out of the rest of the passage. Anyone willing to say either of the first two lies will certainly have no problem telling this one. Here is, in essence, what verse 8 is saying. After talking about a believer's need to recognize their daily sin issues and confess those issues to repair their fellowship with God in verses 6, 7, and 8, and 9, now we find the person saying this, oh, Oh, I don't need to confess my actions because my actions were not sinful. Now, listen, friend, the human race, the human mind has a tremendous ability to rationalize what we do and say and think. We make what we do and say and think to be okay. I've met believers with anger issues, but they had come up with some rational reason and thought pattern that allowed them to disagree with God's word about anger. I've met believers who rationalize stealing, who rationalize having a foul mouth, cheating on their mate, looking at pornography, and having bitterness against other people people, and the list could go on. Verse 10 gives us three key points. It's going to talk about the rationalization. It's going to talk about the reality, and it's going to give us the reason behind the lie. Notice the three R words, the rationalization, the reality, and the reason that's behind the lie. Let's take them one at a time. First of all, the rationalization. The opening line of verse 10, again, says this, if we say we have not sinned. Now, the person that says this has done something which God's word declares to be sinful, but this believer disagrees with the Bible. They have found a way to say, oh, no, 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 what I did was not wrong. Oh, I know what the Bible says, but in my situation, it's okay. That, my beloved friend, is a rationalization kind of statement and you have made it at some time in your life, and so have I. But that brings us to the reality. The reality, after declaring that we have said that we have not sinned in the opening line of verse 10, then God speaks up, and God says this, we make him, that is God, we make him a liar. Our rationalization has said that God has lied because what the Bible says is not true for me. You remember 
at the start of the broadcast, I said that my conversation with that unsaved person where they said, your truth is not my truth, remember that? When an unbeliever says that kind of thing, I'm not surprised at all. God's truth is foolishness to a lost person. But verse 10 is not talking about a lost person, but a believer. The believer is saying that God's truth is not their truth. If that's so, then somebody is lying. Verse 10 says that the believer is declaring God to be the liar. Brother, if I said that, I, oh, if I said that, I'd be real careful about going outside because I'd be afraid of lightning bolt coming and hitting me. You and I dare never call God a sinner. Oh, beloved, God cannot sin and he cannot tempt you and I with sin but he does declare the truth. That brings me to point number three, the reason. What is the reason behind why a person who is a believer can declare God's word to be not true for them? Verse 10 says this, his, God's word is not in us. God's word, which exposes sin, is not in the person. If it was, it would bring conviction about sin, righteousness, and judgment. The Savior's word, the Bible, in a believer has a dynamic impact. But if Scripture has not been taken into the mind, has not been inculcated into the mind and the heart of a person, then the Scripture can't bend the conscience and thinking of that one. Here, here are the takeaway lessons for you and I today, two of them. Takeaway lesson one is this. Are you walking in holiness with God? Are you walking in holiness with God? That's the only way to be in fellowship with God. If you don't desire to live a holy life, well, friend, that's your choice. God has given you a will. You can use it. That's your choice. But if you choose to live an unholy life, then you can't be a child of God. Those two things are diametrically opposed. That's takeaway lesson number one. Takeaway lesson two is this. Are you taking in God's word day by day? God loves his word. He loves his word even above his own name, the Bible says. He will take his word and shape our thinking. He'll shape our Christ-likeness through the word. And that is what you and I really desire, isn't it? I want to be like Jesus. We sing that old gospel song, be like Jesus. This, my song, in the home and in the throng. That really is my heartbeat. I think it's your heartbeat, but it can't become reality if we're not taking in the word of God. I end today speaking to those that may be listening without Christ as Savior. God is holy. You aren't. God must judge sin, all sin, and you're a sinner. Since you did the sin, since you're the sin criminal, God will judge you. But God has made a way of escape. For God so loved you, sinner, that he gave his only begotten son. He died on the cross in your place as your substitute. He said, I'll take your sin unto me and I'll pay it there in Calvary. I'll shed my blood for it. I'll be buried and rise again to prove to you that I can offer you eternal life. And then I will give to you, if you receive me by faith, I will give to you my righteousness and declare you holy. Receive Christ as your Savior today. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.